What we are trying to do is how do we crowd in institutional investors to fill these gaps that we are talking about today. And we at the African Development Bank launched a study, and that study looked at 20 of the global uh, institutional investors and asked them, how do you see multilateral finance institutions? What role can we play to ask you, I mean, to, to leverage your, inf I mean, your, your capital to Africa? And first, multilateral development banks and blended finance. The other part is de risking, right? We have a whole slew of investments that we can de risk whether it's partial guarantee, credit guarantee, uh, guarantee facility or partial risk guarantee facilities. We have a whole slew of these things. Good morning, my name is Diana Gilson. Uh, representing Canada at the Africa. In terms of capital, was global. <laughs> the reason why Africa has struggled is because market infrastructure is deficient in some places and therefore trust does not exist. So we have to work on building trust, we have to work on fixing the market infrastructure. Allowing investors who actually first need to build some infrastructure to take tax, cre tax credits on that, you know, uh, will help build the investment case. So, so I think that's such an important enable, especially at the early stage, to attract investment. There is no doubt that Africa has the world's attention. And there is a palpable sense that an economic transformation of the continent is very much within reach. Private sector can deliver the investment in renewable energy that is needed. We believe it's also the best delivery mechanism. Just look at where we are from an Africa continental free trade agreement perspective. This is the will of all African heads of state to have that agreement signed and make sure it's ratified within a year. And as we move forward into, you know, respecting the deadline of starting to trade in July 2020, there's still a lot of work to be done in terms of negotiations on the tariff concessions, in terms of uh, making sure that, you know, we agree on which goods will be li liberalized first and also uh, making sure that we have more countries that ratify by that time. Some infrastructure existing in the continent that currently today carries about one trillion dollars of uh, total trade. But the problem is that out of the one trillion dollars, intra-African trade is just less than 170 billion dollars. And the problem arises because we do not know what is happening across our borders. The institutional element around the elimination of tariffs over time was a missing piece. And I think for, for, for a banker like, like TDB, we, we see this as a very significant incentive to African business, businessmen to start really looking at the regional market and to start investing across borders because they can take advantage of these new opportunities.